we are heading quickly into a podcast 101 type of workshop and of course we hit really bad rush hour traffic so we will see how it goes two pieces of the same heart two halves of the same story two harmonies to the same services to residents who rent space from here, but also to uh, the general community, to anyone who wants to build their own project. I'm basically going to be offering my services as uh, a consultant, a producer, a coach, and I run my own podcast as well, so, so my home studio will be here now. And I wanted to teach a workshop um, because when I started a podcast nine months ago, I was sort of, I was, I was going based on just an intuition, and I was kind of copying other podcasts that I enjoyed. Like there was something, like there's something about a really good pod, podcast that becomes sticky, like people, people are, are drawn to it. And the thing that I, that I think all those people have in common is an expression of their uniqueness or their authenticity, or their genius. And everyone has different flavors of that. So I'm not really that interested in having a workshop about the right microphone and the audio interface that I bought or the editing software. That, that's just not that interesting to me. But what I am really interested in is helping facilitate Emergent authenticity. I think I think that's what it is. So who am I? What is what is my story? What am I doing here? So I am I'm an artist. Um, I lived in New York City for six years working as an actor. Um, I studied adult development and psychology. Uh, I studied political science and philosophy in college. I'm a dabbler. Like I, I'm just drawn to so many different things. Like I, it's difficult for me to pinpoint down and, and commit to one path. I like to, to dabble in a bunch of different things. For over 10 years, I haven't lived in the same place for more than a year. So there's like something nomadic about my identity. Like there's something that feels freeing about it. I like to put myself in different situations with different people. Um, And I like holding conversations. I like creating space for people to explore, to fail, and be themselves. This is a picture of me. This is a show that I did. I'm the one with the glove. The show that I did in New York called Glory of the World. It was this big, crazy, weird play. <laughs> the story of the show is actually pretty crazy. We, we did the show in Louisville, Kentucky. And it's based on Thomas Merton, who is an old Catholic monk. And this, this monk came and saw the show. He was a former monk. He, he was in the, the monastic order for eight years. He left the monastery to take care of his mom. And then he, and, and he bought a lottery ticket on a whim and won $200 million. And he came and saw the show and was like, this speaks to me so deeply. He used $2 million to go do this in New York. This is like... This is like the pinnacle of the artistic experience in New York. This is how a lot of people are doing. Um, but, but when I got into podcasting, uh, I decided to come here. My dad's here. I'm originally from this area. And I wanted a, a change of pace. So I wrote a podcast called Zion 2.0. And at first, 
the podcast first started just because I was feeling lonely and disconnected in New York. I wasn't getting, getting as much acting work as I wanted. And so, and I listened to so many different podcasts. And finally I was just like, screw this, I'm, I'm gonna do my own. And I just reached out to people in my immediate network. And I was like, okay, what are, like, what are the different things I'm interested in? Like, what, are, what do I wanna organize around thematically? And, uh, well maybe I'll just put this out to people. Like, what does Zion mean to people? Shout things out. Number one draft pick. Zion is the number one draft pick? Nice. Okay. <laughs> what else? You know what I'm talking about, right? I Zion, have no, I actually have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, so Zion Williamson, he played basketball at Duke last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's do. the number one draft pick. I do do it. And everybody just calls him Zion. Zion, okay. Number one draft pick. Okay, what else? Nirvana. Nirvana. Zion has roots in a bunch of different traditions, and it's freedom or liberation. And 2.0 is like the next iteration. So I was interested in people that were upgrading their version of Zion. So people that have gone through some sort of growth experience and come out on the other side with a new perspective. And the logo here, there are a few different components. There's the Angel Moroni, I was born, born into a Mormon family. We left when I was eight, but it's like part of my history. There's psychedelic mushrooms, symbol for transformation, and that serpent you see around, that's a Zen circle, which it's all about the cyclical nature of life, birth, death. And then that's my face, because I wanted to make it personal. I threw a launch party for this podcast in March and uh, was te like prototyping different ways to advertise for it. And this is a little video I made with, with my sister. It's this podcast launch party. I just wanted to go out and stress. Sorry, I'm just a bundle of nerves right now. Hey, that's okay. It means you actually care. Well, what can I be doing to make it better, you know, to, to market it properly? Do you want me to be honest? Yeah. Okay, your Instagram's kind of a mess. There's no real theme, no coherent color palette, and no clear message. Okay. You can tell a lot about a subject's mental state based on our Insta. Yeah, so like, that's still true. I don't quite have an Instagram. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to show you is, when you don't have sponsors yet, you just make up your own. <laughs> <laughs> about whether or not there's extraterrestrial life. They're like, we'll never know because if it's a dark forest, they, they just stay hidden. And on the internet, dark, there's all these new sort of dark forest spaces where people are going, are retreating back from like the public square of social media and turning to things like podcasts because it allows you to express yourself in a safer environment, in a controlled environment. 
Um, and this is happening a well, lot. This is why podcasts are exploding this week. People are having a way to build a specific niche, prototype new ideas, and be themselves. And it builds confidence, and it builds your specific voice and your specific brand. So this is the next, this is the next thing. I want to figure out who you guys are and what it is you're doing here. So I'm opening this up to anyone here. Does anyone want to share? Think about that question. Who are you? What's the story you tell about yourself? Anyone can go. Who are you? Taylor, who are you? Well, when you asked it so existentially. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, well, do you want me to answer that deeply? You can answer however you want. There's no right answer. All right, well, I'll just go out on a limb because I know nobody here except Colin. But uh, I've just realized recently that who I am is a vessel for whatever you want to call the divine or God or, yeah, any kind of religious figure like that through my work. And I'm here because I own a business and a brand, and I'm trying to channel my own messaging into a lot of the social content type things, because a big block for me is actually like speaking my truth, mm -hmm. even though I also help people speak theirs. So for me to continue practicing that is for me to keep honing in on my story and my message. Mm -hmm. And so knowing you, knowing your work, knowing your brand, and knowing how to workshop figured it would help. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for, thanks for calling me here. <laughs> That's what happens when you know the guy. <laughs> um, I'm an artist, um, and I believe that by sharing stories and collecting stories, that you can build such like a huge community of people that are able to live more of their truth and more to their artistic abilities. And so that's why I'm so interested in podcasting because I believe that you can kind of gather everybody and we can like be together. Mm. Well said. And and you're here because you're interested in collecting space those. to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, being able to find a that source that we can collect and keep those stories for a good amount of time. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. I would say I'm a writer. It's the thing I, I think I'd love to do the most, and I, I hate to even put a label on myself and pin myself down to one thing. You know, you see those Instagram or Twitter accounts. It's, I'm a husband. I'm a, you know, I'm a father. I'm a son. And I'm like, bro, you can just not say all that stuff. You know, and just be open. And I'm going to change, right? But I love the idea of capturing a message, putting it down on paper, but but I also know certainly maybe more of the dark forest that, you know, the way the shift in the internet is going is there is going to more visual and audio, right? And so I'm thinking of it almost in terms of, um, I'm here to obviously learn about it. I, I liked your logo and I, you know, love your branding thus far, at least what I know. But I was thinking of it in terms of, you know, let's say, you know, 20 years down the road, like, I mean, you have a podcast, right? Maybe I'll start one sometime in the future, uh, along with writing and stuff, that becomes a legacy that you created. Mm -hmm. Whether, you know, and it'll, in my mind, it'd have value for my family, you know, for whomever in the world. But, um, so I just think it's a way for us to be producers and creators, artists, you know, and, and share your gifts, yeah. you know, to, to the world. I mean, I didn't know you obviously before today, but I, I saw the event and I looked you up and I was like, this dude seems cool. I want to come check it out. So that's on here. Cool. That's awesome. I, I love a lot of the things that you just said. The thing that's sticking out right now is um, there's this distinction be, between being a creator and being a consumer. And if you're passive, you can, you can easily consume content all day. Yeah. There's so much of it. Um, but you, but something I've noticed in myself is if I do that for too long without generating content myself, without expressing myself in some way, there's like discontent or dis-ease that starts to happen. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Anybody else? 
Yeah. Uh, so I kind of got into that realm um, maybe three years ago or so. I had a YouTube video um, talk show and it was based around <laughs> singlehood and the Mormon church, which is a difficult thing in itself. Um, and we had a, I think we had an audience of about 2,000. So it's pretty popular. And then it got picked up by a local um, TV network, kind of, it was an online TV network. And then I kind of grew out of that. And then I, um, I do a lot of the same as you guys where you dabble a lot. I think a lot of us are just natural creators. You can't stop. It just the process of creating is enough and living a big life. And so I, I make films on the side, some indie films. I have one coming out this fall and I, um, my background is journalism and also marketing and I, I write fiction and nonfiction books as well. And so like creating, we have a vlog now. Um, it's, it's about blending our families together and, and trying to fit teens together in this new world we have. and. We feel like we kind of have a unique story in that, um, I mean, it's, it's not unique in that the world is going that way, where the traditional family is no longer as much of a thing as it used to be. And we're taking this interesting journey and we are doing all of these kind of exciting things in the meantime. And it's so much fun to just vlog about it every day. And even though it's not a podcast, but it's a video platform and down the road, I might try to do, I might do a podcast again. And he's thinking about doing something with, um, he create, he collects and creates figures. And I think there's a lot of people that I think most of the world wants to be consumers and podcasting and, and those different realms have a way of connecting people together. When you're, when you realize that, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. When you listen to someone who's raw, who's just trying to get through life and they feel like a social outcast or they feel like, you know what, I don't have it together all the time. And it really speaks to people who get tired of this sanitized world that we live in. They're like, oh my gosh, that person is going through the same thing or that person has the weird same passion that I have in creating, collecting these weird, I call them dolls. <laughs> They're um, not dolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's a great way to just to capture events as you're living them. I'm sure you go back to some of the older podcast episodes that you've done and, and the journey that brought you through those points. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we, we all are dabblers, I feel, today. And there's almost a necessity for it. Like the economic reality of the world we're living in today is that it requires us to be agile and to be able to move and create in ways that uh, are more important than they used to be. Also, if you notice, I asked these questions and you didn't have a mic. So you can kind of hear you, but you're in the distance. We're gonna do an exercise where we're gonna take a little bit of reflection time to prototype, an idea. So I believe that everyone in this room could start a podcast. If you want, you can do it. It's easy. It's really easy. But it takes a little bit of intention and work to figure out what it is that you want to say. And you don't have to have a final answer. That's the beautiful thing too, is it, is it iterates over time and it grows over time and changes. But getting to that initial first step. So this is this is called Theory U. It's created by this guy Otto Sharmer. And the U process is basically anytime you're trying to birth something new into the world, you can use this as a as a model. So the first is stopping and listening to others and listening to what life is calling you to do. Then you observe. You act as, an, as, an, as objective as possible, observing what comes up and listening. And presencing is being able to get to that place of silence. Where you get below the thoughts, the, the, the judgmental thoughts, the what you had for lunch the other, the other day. Everything that's sort of floating up here, presencing allows you to sink 
beneath it, and you're just listening and waiting without any expectation. And then this is where the prototype comes in. You can do this you as many times as possible. So you start living into whatever answer came up. So maybe I'll go down this path and see where this leads. It's all about acting from a whole, acting from the, your whole self. So we're gonna take a little minute here to reflect on some of these questions. So who are you? What is your vocation? Vocation to me is what do you what do you serve? What's your calling? What's life calling you to do? And why podcast? Like you're here for a reason. You're here to podcast for a reason. So what is it about this medium that's calling to you? So we're gonna take we're gonna take five minutes. Five minutes to close your eyes. And I'll lead you on a little sort of guided meditation here. But it's five minutes of just silence. Five minutes of just listening. So I'll invite everyone to just find a, find a comfortable place in your, in your body. Sit so your back is straight. Notice if there's any tension. I carry a lot of tension in my shoulders. So if you, if you, if you notice any tension, just look at it. Observe and say, oh, that's interesting. My shoulders are kind of tight. Okay. And adjust accordingly. And just like notice your capacity to watch your breath. Who's that? Who's that watching the breath? stress of being late to get here. And on the exhale, just let it go. Start, and start to look at your, what thoughts are coming up right now. If you're like, what is this? What is this even? Just look at the thought. Just see it. Oh. And then go back to your breath.
to visualize that you that you shape. And imagine slowly coming up the other side of the you. And you're coming up the you with something that wasn't there before. Maybe it's a little insight. Maybe it's stillness. Whatever it is, you're emerging from a place of stillness. Start to notice your feet on the ground. Feel your body in your chair. podcast where we're doing right now. I'm recording an episode of the podcast. So this is, ep- this is episode one. Maybe it's the only episode. Podcasting with purpose. So I'm really curious. I'm really curious about what's happening with people. What that experience was like for you. Maybe it was shitty. Maybe you hated it. Come up and talk to me about it. Maybe you have like some deep insight that wasn't there before. Come up, come up and chat. I'll share mine. Yeah, please. So I'm usually not one to like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it, it comes across, I don't know. Like new agey. New agey yeah. or being vulnerable in the group and your eyes are closed or whatever. But I was like, you know, I'm gonna engage this, yeah. right? Instead of pull back. So I engaged it and You know, when you start, and I understand the concept of that theory, right? Um, Think of it in terms of, you know, a work cloud over your head that then gets distilled down into you and then settles at the bottom. And that's the distillation of the truth, the purpose, your message, whatever you want to be. And then on the, on the, the right side of that you, it's the, the exposition of that to use a writing term. Um, and so when, when you took us to that bottom and, you know, I I was really clear and, and really calm inside. And I, and I thought, what is it about this that I'm attracted to, Mm -hmm. right? Ultimately. And because, you know, I used to play basketball when I was younger and I'm like, why did I watch basketball? Well, I watched it because I like playing it. And it's a little circular in the reasoning, but you understand, you get it. And I played it because I liked watching it. So then I was thinking in terms of the context of the podcast or podcasting. And, you know, I had the idea originally, I mean, there's so many LDS missionaries here that come back from their missions. I was like, you know, it'd be cool to like interview return missionaries because they've been all over the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've traveled a decent amount, but I'm not, I don't like to travel that much anymore planes give me anxiety so I'm like but I was like think about the stories of and I don't think they come home and they don't think in the terms that I would and just for my background I mean I was getting a PhD in Middle East studies I speak Arabic Pashti some Hebrew so I'm well read let's just say that um and but I think you could ask the right questions that would get them to think of the government their experiences in perhaps a different way than just the boilerplate I went on a mission So I was originally thought of that that idea as a podcast. And as you were taking us through this experience, I was thinking back about that. That was my original idea, what I was attracted to, because I love reading and I love the world and I love the Middle East. And, And so I was thinking, but really what it boils down to for me is I'm attracted to conversation. I love good conversation. And I think there's something that unique that not always, of course, but there's something that can uniquely happen in a conversation that is different than, you know, the whole, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, the video scene, which is a very one to many experience if we're analyzing it structurally. Yeah. Whereas the podcast is really a conversation between two lights, if you will. 
and 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 letting them burn together and see what comes out of that. And so that was my thought process as as you kind of took us through that you know experience and I engaged it. On the upside, I was like, you know, it's really about creating a conversation where you learn and grow. You can get new ideas. I've gotten, I've had some of my best ideas come when I was talking to someone. Mm -hmm. They rarely come when it's just ingested in my mind, yeah. right? Because that's still the phase where it's the stress, it's the rush, it's the cloud over you. And so to me, that was the, the cool aspect. And I think one of the things that should attract all of us to this medium is that it's a structured conversation that you can learn something from. And, and, and certainly if you participate and engage, you can come up with your own unique ideas and so forth to share. So that was my short experience. That's beautiful, man. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. <coughs> so, can we apply? <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you what what was the experience like for you? I mean, it, it, presumably you've done that before, right? So, um, but for you, what's it like to recenter and really this is almost like a circle of innovation, right? And we're always we always need to be innovating ourselves, right? Our medium, what, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're a podcast host. Uh, You're, I'm, like, I'm reversing it on you. Yeah, no, flipping I'm, the script. I'm just noticing it. <laughs> yeah, that it feels like it's it's like in you. It's, it's natural. You want to do. It's natural. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the the experience for me was um, I mean, not unsimilar to you. The, the, the words that were coming out of my mouth weren't pre planned. Just wing, winging it. Whatever you know, whatever came up, I said. Yeah. Um and. And, and the part the part of being in this seat is the experience for me was like I was feeling gratitude actually to, to be able to hold the container. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think that's awesome, right? You, you, so many times we need to be aware of the container that we're the vessel, and I love that you were like open, right? Mm -hmm. Because so many times in our and that's why I said earlier like I don't like it when people confine themselves to. I'm a podcaster. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, I'm way more than that. Yeah. You know, or I'm this. I'm going to be more than that. Because what it does is it puts restraints on you. And so with you, when you're being open, it allows the universe, which is really how I like to speak about it, it allows the universe to come into you and to speak through you mm -hmm. and to channel into something that really is transcendent. Mm -hmm. You know, in my mind, that's my belief of it. And so too many times we get caught up in our labels that we don't respect A, the vessel and where the water's coming from mm -hmm. for that vessel. Yeah. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. I'll give somebody else a chance. Yeah. Thanks so much. Anybody else? stuff so I I've, I've already kind of know that I'm a podcaster I've already kind of started that I am and I already do vlogs and I already do stories and I already have those conversations um, so coming today is just more um, finding like for sure like you know okay like like the vulnerability like yeah okay I'm really following my intuition I'm really following what I'm supposed to be doing and learning from others that have like been a little bit more serious you know like I just do things on my phone I don't have fancy tools I don't do any of that kind of stuff and so I'm like I'm just gonna throw it up there, be raw, be whatever, because I believe that I'm like a joy bringer and a delight giver, and I just want to like collect things from people, and I just wanna hear everything that you have to say, even if it's something that's like super raw and real and like hard to handle, um, and then kind of like flip it and like, okay, great. Like now how can we like bring joy out of that and bring some love with that? And so I enjoy coming to these types of things and, and connecting with other people that can kind of, validate you, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of like what I'm doing, yeah. I love that. 
I'm curious what the what the shift was. Um, to podcasting, or just and what what do you mean shift for what? I think you I think something you said was coming to talk to someone that's a little more serious. Yeah. Like, just take it more seriously or something. Um. Well, I am such a I'm a dabbler too, and I feel like um just like a lot of whatever, right? I mean, just whatever. Yeah. Um. And so like um to have people like that are like I'm gonna focus and be like have a strategy, like have a plan for things in place. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. I could have like a plan. Um, because I'm just like fly at the seat of your pants. I never have an idea of what I'm gonna be doing. I just wanna like vomit. I, I always call it like word vomit. I just word vomit everything all the time. Um, and so it'd be kind of nice to be able to be like, okay, I can still word vomit. I can still be who I am, but let's like have like a little strategy with it. You know, and so I, yeah, structure my word vomit. Just vomit here and there, you know, so. so in, the spirit of, in the spirit of structure, yeah. what sorts of conversations are you interested in facilitating? Oh my gosh, everything? <laughs> well, who are you? <laughs> who would like Can to I just do it all? Like, I want everything, all the time. No, you, you, you could. Yeah. I mean, you could. I, I'm honestly, right now, like, I have, like, I'm literally an artist. I paint and so and do every type of art that you can imagine and put things together and that's how I started um, and like I was able to connect people like I threw events like come and learn art from me mm. and while I was throwing those events and we have like I taught them my process of art like I do textile art so I embroider and then I watercolor over it because like why would you want to just regular embroider right so like I taught them how to do all of that and during that time because it's like a labor intensive thing it was mostly women that were, were gathering doing like these traditional type of things like back in the day like this is what you did right and um, because we were there in that space and like it was like 15 women women at a time like what do you do you have conversations you have those do things and it went from like people didn't really know each other right because it's just randoms that came in and then we left and we were great friends and we and there's people that built those relationships so like that for me was very important I was like oh I can do that I can do so much more yeah yeah there were I... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when, like, when I really connected with myself yeah like I started podcasting because I wanted more friends right Right. I, I started art because I wanted more friends. And I only had paint. So I needed people. Yeah. Did yeah. it work for you? Did it you get more friends? It did so well. I have lots of friends now. Like Dee's my friend. She's here. You should make her come up here. But yeah. So like, yeah. I agree with you. Like, because it, we solve our own problems, right? And then when we solve them, we're like, okay, we're going to teach everybody else how to solve their problems too. So maybe that's why you're here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is, that reminds me of something I was thinking about the other day. Okay. Which is, it's, it's sort of related to that creator-consumer dichotomy, yeah. where you can be a student mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. And that's great to, to have sort of like a beginner's mind and be approaching new situations mm -hmm. with that open mind. But there's a trap you can get into where you identify exclusively as a student right. and you never own your own right. authority. Yeah. You never step up into a position where you're bringing other people together and you're yeah. sharing something that you uniquely have to offer. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It's because it's scary. It's like, the, it's like the scariest thing to be vulnerable to yourself, to be like, okay, I am an expert at my own unique personality and my own unique skills and tools like I can offer that to other people so that they can have something to step on to go to the next level for themselves. Like that's what's scary yeah. for a lot of people. And I think that's why they stay in that stupid mindset. Yeah, and doing a serious thing, I found is like, brings a lot more meaning. Yeah. And meaning sometimes leads to happiness yeah. and sometimes leads to failure. Oh my gosh, yes. So failure also breeds more meaning too. I think we should fail all the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for being yeah. here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yes. I think we have time for one more person. Ready, Dave? Ready, Dave? I called you out. You don't, Dave.
So, <laughs> or she's the opposite, right? She's a fly by the seat of her pants. That's why we're great friends. What do, you, what do you get from being a perpetual learner? Like, how does it, how does it serve you? Because because if you're doing it, you're getting something from it. Right? Absolutely. I mean, like, I love learning. I know for me, a, self, a part of self care is reading mm -hmm. and learning and giving my brain new ideas to chew on and to think about. I love bringing a lot of disparate ideas together and seeing how things that are totally unrelated are actually really connected. And so for me, that's why I like to learn and keep learning. But it has definitely been a way to hide in the past, mm -hmm. right? And so I know that, I know it's a tendency. <laughs> and so for me, it's been like a big shift in my business and like showing up and coming in front of the knowledge, right? Or, or not hiding behind it, but leading with it. What's your business? I'm a life coach. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I've been coaching for almost six years for another organization and just recently decided to go out on my own and, and do my own, have my own business. And so I think we were talking about this before we came over here. Yeah. I'm, you know, really good at being vulnerable and opening up to the people I believe that have earned the right to mm -hmm. hear um, the, those parts of my story that aren't always the pretty parts, you know, the hard parts. Um, when I'm in that um, space with my clients and they're sharing their mess, like I, I will share my mess too. But for me, in terms of building my platform, it's been this like, um, what parts am I willing to give to people who haven't heard the right to hear it, right, mm -hmm. necessarily. And, and I'm pulling that, that quote from like Brene Brown, she talks about, right, like what, what you're willing to put out there, you know, to the people who are in the peanut gallery and not necessarily willing to be in the fight as well. So that has been my space of like managing and trying to decide like what what is my comfort level, what's my tolerance level, and like tiptoeing a little bit farther outside of that and sharing a little bit more mm -hmm. because there is that tolerance. That's something that Audrey does really beautifully. It's like sharing, being super vulnerable, and helping so many people with that. And I aspire to that, but it's also like, you know, slowly like getting to that place where I'm fully ready to put it all out there. Mm. Yeah. Well, I wonder if the boundary you set is, is a is a healthy one. Like, I mean, you know, it sounds like it is. Yeah. It sounds like it is, and it also sounds like uh, you're starting to like become aware of, of what the growth edge is for yeah. you, the thing that, that you need to do to push yourself forward. Right. And from hearing you say this, it, it doesn't necessarily sound like to me, like it's like you need to be more messy in front of more people, or like more vulnerable, vulnerable in front of more people. It sounds like because as a life coach, you're strategic about it. And I think that's really smart. Yeah. So if you were to start a podcast, what would you want to talk about? I want to talk, well, I I feel like my purpose here is to help make the world a more joyful place. And I have, you know, through all of that research that I've done, have pulled together so much information and distilled it down into a really easy way to make very quick, profound change for my clients. Mm -hmm. I love it. Like sometimes it's like in the first hour that we work together, right? We can make these huge shifts because it's just flipping on the light switch, right? And so I want to teach people how to flip the light switch. I want to teach them how to lead their brain instead of being a follower, follower freer, and really like teaching them the skills that we don't have because we're in this really interesting stage of you know evolution of our brain and like overcoming the fight or flight response with our higher order brain. So I think that is conversations too. I find that I love talking with people and there's so many times where I've just met up with friends um, or you know former clients or whomever and just have natural conversations and just you know I geek out on this stuff and we get into these really really cool conversations and I think back and like I wish that was recorded that was like so rad so rad the, you know and it, it was unscripted unplanned but it just was a, a meeting of the minds and talking about our stories and teaching through the story. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that would be a really cool way to do that, but I also feel like there needs to be 
some of the teaching component because it is very different. So I guess it's still kind of figuring out like what exactly that looks like. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, some where it's just me chatting or talking about a topic and then others where it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. That's where I kind of feel pulled to. What would you call Peach Brain? Like, learn to leave your brain. That's kind of going back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a great title. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I think you should do it. Thanks, Thank you for sharing. Oh, you're sure. welcome. Thanks. So, this was an experiment. I've never done this before. So this is as a prototype myself. So I'm starting to prototype what it's like to start to engage with some of the things I'm interested in with larger groups of people live and experimenting with what sort of content comes out of it. So that you process, like I went through it too. This is new, this is new for me. And one of, the, one of the reasons I decided to do this as a particular format is because the people that come up here and everyone else who's in the room act as witnesses, right? So people are up here and they're, they're prototyping different ideas and then it's recorded and then it's here and then I have a copy of it and then I can send it to them and they can re-listen to it. So it's like, when you say, when, when you speak things, they, you're speaking reality, you're, you're speaking things into reality. There's something about that idea that I, that I really like. And there are a group of people in here that you spoke your reality in front of. So it's like a, it's an extra incentive or drive to follow that difficult place and to push through the initial fear of starting a new project. So I have a podcast studio at Impact Hub and I'm offering one-on-one -on -one consulting to people to help prototype their own projects. Speaking in front of microphones, speaking in front of other people, in front of strangers, finding your voice, it takes a little time, and, and it's helpful to be in a place where you feel comfortable failing. And framing failure as like a way to build something new. It's leverage. So I'm working with people to help build their brands, grow followings. I have all this equipment, so I have for production services. So people don't have to worry about the tech stuff. They just have to worry about the content. I'm also interested in starting a weekly meetup, which will be hosted here. And we're gonna build out some of these ideas. Taylor's a life coach. We're gonna be building some of this together. And Creating community, a, a, a community of practice, and a community to co-create what it is we want it to be. So if that's something that, that people are interested in here, when I shut all this down, I'll have a, an email sign-up sheet on, on the computer. And you can come up with your name and email, and I'll send out for information. People on Twitter, that's the way that I communicate most these days. So at Colin of Zion is my, is my Twitter handle. And, uh, I think that's it. I'm feeling pretty complete unless anybody has any questions or, or thoughts or reflections. And if you do, come to the hot seat. Anybody? My only thought is just to say thank you for doing it, right? I mean, it just, it takes a little effort and it doesn't take a ton, but you put yourself out there or if you were in high, whatever, you set it up and you get a collection of people that come and I had a good experience, so thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for saying that. Great, you guys. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, and please, if, I mean, if you want a copy of this podcast that we recorded, put your email down as well. Um, thanks so much for coming, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. We can't get back to our car. Everything's closed off. <laughs> Every day an adventure. This is not looking promising. What do we do? We did just learn about failing. We are failing to get to the car. We will try and try again. So. Oh my gosh. So we found a guard who told us we should not leave the ticket thing in the car, but bring it with us. And he was nice enough to let us into the building so we can get home. We're not gonna have to sleep here on the streets. Hold on one second.
so weird.